And good evening. Welcome to Working Hands Radio. Welcome Erie, Pennsylvania, here uh, on your dial at 1400. And welcome tonight. A special hello to everybody out there on YouTube Live. And uh, we straightened that out from last week. I think you're out there. So, as usual, if you're online tonight and can join this program anywhere around the country or around the globe, uh, check in. I've got my son Robert with me tonight. He's going to be kind of monitoring the social media. And we always do like to do a roll call. It's kind of fun to see where people are uh, checking in from. So that's always fun. So this is week number six. And uh, once again, broadcasting right here uh, from the historic Boston store in downtown Erie. And uh, this used to be the place back in the day. And uh, uh, as I said before, you know, I did a promo before the program aired. I always go under the clock because that's about the last thing that's left of the Boston store as we knew it back in the 60s, right? But uh, that's where we met, under the clock. If you were anywhere downtown, and your parents, uh, you're going to go to another store or a different floor of the boss's store, you know, they always told you meet under the clock at the right time. So that's where we're at. And, you know, of course, that's what the boss's store looks like today. Cool building. So, again, uh, welcome to everybody tonight. So I always like to talk a little bit about why we're here tonight. And uh, this show is still fairly new. This is program number six. We're halfway through our first 12-week pilot. And uh, I have to tell you um, a few things. You know, out of... Uh, almost five decades now, unbelievably, uh, being involved in one way or the other in manufacturing. And uh, after uh, being a you know, tool and die maker for many years and uh, owning my own shops and uh, working as I do now back in the tool making world, and then as the tool and die guy at the, that website where I've recorded all these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tutorials, I have to say this radio program for me has been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in the trade. And why is that? Well, as I've said before, uh, when I'm broadcasting on YouTube or teaching, it's one-sided, right? I'm, I'm out there teaching a concept or a new thing. I'm you know, showing you guys what to do. And uh, unless I check back uh, in a few days or a few weeks and see the comments or the questions, I miss that, right? So we're here tonight in this beautiful uh, station in downtown Erie, uh, WJET, and uh, we pay for this airtime, folks, with the help of some uh, really good folks that sponsor this program. And uh, this is not a, I always say, not a WJET connoisseur media uh, production here. This is a Phil Kerner, the tool and die uh, guy production. So, again, the, those sponsors uh, make things happen here. So your host tonight has worked with his hands most of his life. And if you're a craftsman out there tonight and uh, if you're a hardworking guy or a hardworking gal, uh, your host knows what it's like to go through that on a daily basis, so uh, I get it. So uh, you're home for the next hour. is right here, I hope. And again, uh, the phone lines are here, and it's on the screen if you're watching this online on YouTube, uh, 814-451-1400. And, of course, if you're in Erie, 451-1400. So those lines are open. And uh, over the fat past few weeks, uh, we've uh, had some guests on the program. Uh, I've had some students from a local robotics uh, at McDowell High School on the program, and uh, that was really exciting for me because it's just another way to get kids excited about manufacturing. Now, in my day, you know, we didn't do robots. You know, we were doing, uh, you know, the, the, the things they had you do in shop class, right? But now, uh, it, it, using this latest software and uh, uh, these competitions these kids have, kids have, they're not only excited to build these robots, they're learning this really good uh, uh, new technology, it's new in manufacturing, 3D printing and the, the 3D software. And then they, they're really excited to win these competitions because uh, they've only got like six weeks to put this thing together, design it and put it together. And the trick with that whole program, of course, is the kids have to do like 90% of it. The teachers are there just as advisors. The only sad thing about that whole program that I thought was interesting, they build these really cool robots and then they have to take them apart because the servo motors are so expensive they can't, they can't be, keep buying new ones. So... You, you, you see the robot once, and it goes to the competition, and whatever it does, you better take a good picture of it, right? And then, of course, another week I had on one of my apprentices, and we talked a little bit about his experience in the, in the trade and uh, learning the trade and what it's like at, in the year 2017 and 18 to be in a state-run pre, uh, apprenticeship versus the apprenticeship I went through back in 1979 uh, through 83. And I was very fortunate to have a really, really good apprenticeship uh, here, right here in Erie at Anson Tools and Gages. No longer around, but uh, boy, that was a, a really tremendous place. And I, uh, I still have all my records from my apprenticeship, right? So 
we've talked a lot about that. And, of course, last week um, we brought on a local entrepreneur, Tom Kennedy. And uh, Tom's a, uh, just a tremendous human being, and he's one of our sponsors. But uh, he has invested heavily in downtown Erie. And, of course, the thing with Tom is that uh, he comes from a background in manufacturing. Uh, he worked for General Electric and uh, ended up in Erie. But he had a heart for uh, entrepreneurship, and he had a heart for real estate. So off he went and uh, started buying real estate and buildings in Erie. And we're not talking little buildings here, right? We're talking uh, our taller buildings in town. And he just built a brand new hotel on our bayfront. And it was very, uh, we had a great interview with him last week. So we've covered uh, quite a bit of ground here. Now, one of the things I wanted to make sure of as we go into this program is that uh, if you're listening to this program for the first time and uh, uh, trying to get the gist of it, again, um, what I've noticed over the last couple years now um, obviously uh, we've got kind of a divided country going on here right and I am in this world every day as far as the uh, blue collar world let's call it the uh, manufacturing world the craftsmanship world and it's um, it's got its own lingo its own cadence I mean I've been around it my entire life um, my uncle's own shops and I mean I grew up I grew up in uh, tool and die shops from a very young age so I'm very familiar with the the thoughts and attitudes and the language and the, the things that get said in a shop, right? So, I, I mean, it's just in my DNA, obviously. So, again, back to this program, it's just a different perspective. And what do I mean by that? Well, again, talking about this during those first few weeks, uh, four, five weeks, actually, and having guests on in manufacturing, and that's always going to be a big emphasis of this program. But it's also, um, I, 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 I'm a big fan of uh, talk radio, and Whenever I'm in the car, I tend to turn talk radio on. And what we have, it's a lot of very talented hosts, but they can't really connect to you, right? Um, and uh, God bless these guys that make 5 or $10 million a year on talk radio. But, you know, when you go out to dinner and you, your limo takes you there and you order a $300 bottle of wine, please don't tell me you're in touch with the fabric of America, right? Um, so this place, again, Working Hands Radio, was put together from the bottom of my heart to get you involved to get the callers in. I could do this from my home if I just wanted YouTube comments, uh, but the trick here, uh, you are the stars of this program. That's why we have the phone lines, and that's why we, we have this beautiful soundboard and this audio you're hearing right now that is pristine and crystal clear. It's because I wanted to help facilitate a program where you have a voice, okay? So that being said, uh, talking a little bit about perspective and an overview on life, and again, if you've spent time in your career, and especially like me and many people like me, many years and decades in a trade, uh, learning it and still maybe learning a little bit every day still, right? Um, you do form some maxims, maxims in your life, some things you live by, uh, some goals, not goals, but some um, uh, just some uh, things in your life that you know to be true. And what I've watched now, and uh, again, just a little overview tonight, um, from my perspective, um, the, pr the progress or lack thereof of, of, of society in the last few years. And uh, let's get one thing straight. I know I'm treading on uh, thin ice here, okay? And uh, the last thing we want to do is get into to politics. And uh, believe me, um, Republicans, Democrats, right, left, you know, we've got some issues, I feel like, in this country. And again, I know I have to be careful here, but you know, I'm watching what's going on right now because of the work I do online. And uh, it feels like to me America's getting to be a, a little nastier than it used to be. And uh, because of the work I do online, uh, and a lot of people get to use anonymous you know, acronyms for their names or whatever, and uh, avatars, I guess, um, people don't think twice of just teeing off on somebody. And it's just it's amazing. So, you know, I've spent time on both coasts. You know, I was lucky enough to spend some time in New York City and uh, love it. I've uh, spent a lot of time in Los Angeles. Amazing. And the creative energy capital of the world out there. But, you know, the rest of us in the middle, I always say, there's the, the left coast, the right coast, and then there's the rest of us in the middle. And I know that's, uh, that's who my audience is, right? Because we get up every day, and it uh, doesn't matter who our congressman is and who the president is, really, does it? Because we're going to get up tomorrow morning in the morning, and we're going to get in the you know, Erie PA. It might be 60 degrees tomorrow morning. It might be 12. It might be minus 20. But we're going to get up no matter what. We're going to go to work. We're going to punch that clock, and we're going to do what our boss tells us to do, pay our taxes, rinse, and repeat. And that's, you know, that's the way it goes in manufacturing, steady work. So, again, like I said, it's, personally, I don't really care 
you know, I like politics, but the president and Congress, you know, we've, we've kind of looked at this whole thing now as a, we've kind of, kind of a bloated mess down there, right? So I remember I lived through the 60s as a child, and the 60s was a mess. And uh, as a child, a young child, uh, before I was 10, you know, presidents were getting assassinated, race riots, the Vietnam War, it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. And, and I feel like right now we're right on the edge of that. And uh, again, the lack of respect for our institutions uh, is just amazing. And I don't know about you, and I'm really curious to hear what you guys think tonight uh, about this. And um, respect, just the basic decency of respecting people, right? Um, a few years ago, this uh, guy next to me got me a private tour of the West Wing of the White House. And it was a big tour because we had to do the whole Secret Service check thing. It was awesome, Father's Day gift. But, uh, you know, I wore a suit and tie when I went to the White House because, you know what, I might just bump into the vice president or the president, and I, I didn't, but I was ready, right? Just respect. So all of a sudden now, um, we've got this thing, and I don't want to get into, believe me, uh, a gun debate, but uh, our kids are getting killed now, and uh, it's, it's happening with a little bit of uh, alarming regularity. And um, I understand the, 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 the um, what do I want to say, the emotion on both sides of this issue but if even if i were anti-gun i have to be real um there's millions and millions and millions and millions of guns in this country i don't know if we're ever going to collect them right i don't know if that's ever going to happen so that might not be the solution so page three you know um you know crazy people do crazy things i mean we're, we've got people mowing down people with cars uh and what's really aggravating me is uh we're not even enforcing the laws we have and you know, again, looking at what's happened uh, with the FBI getting all these tips on this last massacre, and nothing happened, and, and they, they, they didn't do it. There's over 1,000 FBI agents in that part of Florida, and, and nobody got the tip. And, you know, I think the FBI guys on the street are good guys, but they can only do what they're told to do. And if the bureaucracy can't move fast enough to react, this is what you get. Our institutions, I feel like, are just failing us. So, um, you know, the gun control thing... I get it. I totally get it. I'm not a big gun guy. I inherited some guns when my father passed away. I don't think I've shot a, a rifle in 20 years. It is fun. I love blowing off pop cans. It's, it's, a, it's a good time. I don't know if I need an AK-47. Uh, that's a whole other debate. But I just wanted to say, you know, it's interesting. The guns have always been here, right? Um, we all had gun racks in our cars back in the 70s. And, uh, you know, I, th I remember bringing a gun into school to, to ask my teacher how to clean the barrel out. Can you imagine that now? And, but you know what? So half the kids in school had a gun rack in their car with guns and ammo, and there were fights in high school, but nobody shot each other. Where are we here? You know, um, I just feel like uh, we've just, again, lost that uh, respect for each other. And you can laugh all you want. I get it. You know, I, don't, I never wanted to be the old guy saying get off the lawn, although I've never gotten to say that. And that is on my bucket list. I just want to do it once. In fact, I should hire some kids. That would be a good Father's Day gift. Can you bring some kids over to have me yell, get off my lawn? But, you know, uh, that was a simpler time. And, again, I know as we progress as a society, I only see one solution here. And I, I just uh, I, I think the time has come to guard our schools because that's where they're going, and they feel like they have the opportunity to go in. And the last thing I'll end with is a few months ago, I was invited to a local high school uh, for a presentation, and it was actually my alma mater here in Erie McDowell High School, which is a very uh, big school, and uh, I couldn't get in the front door, and I was invited, and, uh, you know, they signed me in, they buzzed me in after they knew who I was, I was escorted to the room where I was supposed to go, but I wasn't getting in that school, and I wasn't certainly getting in that school with a gun, so I don't get what piece is missing there, you know, I just don't get it. So I'm sure you have some opinions on that. This isn't a uh, pro-gun, anti-gun program tonight, but I feel like um, we've gotten to the place in this country where we've lost a lot of respect for each other, and it's coming out in really, really um, uh, awful ways now. We don't just argue now. Uh, we get a gun and, and shoot people, and that, that's just um, unacceptable. So we'll be back with your comments. I'm sure you have some thoughts on that right after um, these messages. Captain Brad White here, founder of New England Burials at Sea. Because of our well-respected brand reputation, we are so proud that we've grown from coast to coast as people from all over ask for us by name to use our services. You too will be impressed at our attention to detail. Many families say, I didn't know you could do this, where, or how to honor our parents' final sea burial wishes. 
From ash gatherings to full body burials, we work with all cultures and creeds and can accommodate families up to six or larger groups to 400. Our sea burial tributes are respectful, memorable, and affordable with prices starting at just under $495. Check out our informative website, newenglandburialsatsea.com, and be sure to ask for our free informational DVD. We'd be honored to be of service to you and your family, for now or in the future. So contact us today. Visit newenglandburialsatsea.com or call 877-897-7700. Again, 877-897-7700. newenglandburialsatsea.com. Hi, folks. This is Phil Kerner for Working Hands Radio. Let's face it. The last 10 years or so has been one tough ride for American manufacturing. Well, this sponsor of Working Hands Radio has managed to not only get through the last 10 years, but just celebrated their 50th year in business in 2017. Folks, I've been doing this for a long time, and I have to tell you, I've never seen a shop that jumps through more hoops to keep their customers satisfied than industrial sales and manufacturing right here in Erie, Pennsylvania. With over $30 million in equipment on the shop floor, no job is too simple, no job is too complex for ISM. CNC milling and turning, robotic welding, laser cutting, plasma burning, assembly, and powder coating are all done under one roof, which gives ISM a big edge over many companies that might have to subcontract many of those operations out and lose control of the process. Industrial sales and manufacturing deals with some of the most demanding customers in the world and strides for continuous improvement on a daily basis. Built in Erie, found around the world. Give them a shot. ISMary.com. All right, welcome back. This is Working Hands Radio. I'm your host, Phil Kerner. The number here is 451-1400. If you're uh, uh, out of town, 814-451-1400. Love to hear from you tonight. And a uh, couple quick things I need to add right away. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the program, um, we are brought to you by the generosity of some people who get it, some people who saw this as an opportunity to move this, uh, the conversation forward on manufacturing in America. And um, we're very blessed to have these guys that, to pay for this radio time. So you'll notice I'm wearing, if you're online with me right now, I've got this amazing, uh, beautiful cow hat on, I guess. And it is, it is sharp, isn't it, Robert? I, I think I might uh, wear this out tonight. And, uh, but this is a new sponsor called Utterly Smooth, and this is a great story. Um, these guys actually called the radio station after my first broadcast and said they'd like to get in touch with me to sponsor. Well, you know, between my, my job and then the uh, toolandieguy.com and uh, producing this program and all that, I was a few weeks late getting a hold of them. So, Mr. Bill Kennedy, if you're listening tonight, uh, this is really nice stuff. It's called, uh, again, Utterly Smooth. And they've been around since, I think, 1978, family-run business. And if you're uh, on YouTube, if you go to How It's Made, Hand Lotion, get out a four-minute video there. But uh, Utterly Smooth Hand Cream, very nice. They've got body lotions, all that. My wife's been using it. Uh, she loves it. She's been handing it out to her women's group. They all love it. So thank you to Utterly Smooth. And uh, quickly, uh, another uh, new sponsor that jumped on this week was Simple Solutions for Living. And that's actually a woman-owned business here in town. And her name is Marion Taylor here in Erie, Pennsylvania. And uh, that's her and her crew. And what Marion does is really cool. You know, as you get older and the house is getting a little big or maybe a spouse passes away, you got this house full of stuff and you want to downsize and move. Well, Marion and her business, uh, they'll come in, Simple Solutions for Living, box you up, go through what you need, what you don't need, and move you into your new place. Nice, nice uh, service there. So, Marion, and uh, welcome aboard uh, Simple Solutions for Living and again, utter, Utterly Smooth uh, Creams. Very nice to have you guys on board. All right, so um, back to uh, Working Hands Radio. Robert, uh, we always do, and again, if you're with me on YouTube tonight, please check in. Uh, tell us what you think of the program. Please call in if you have uh, any questions about manufacturing or you'd like to get the conversation started in a different direction. That's why we are here. Uh, Robert, we have a few check-ins tonight uh, on, on YouTube? We do. All right. Um, all right. So Toolman22364 is saying good evening from Mississippi. Like it. Um, got a couple guys from Michigan. Farmer Frank checking in from Flint. And uh, 
creative screen name who axed you from dearborn michigan as well all right um you also got randy from california mariposa california and we have benjamin davis uh from gene davis fabrication right here in erie pennsylvania i used to do a lot, do a lot of business with his dad when i had kerner tool and die company uh, gene davis sales uh, service and sales i uh, sales and service i believe the name was so yeah good erie family there so welcome aboard you guys on youtube um Quickly moving along here, manufacturing uh, this Sunday's paper. I got a phone call from somebody saying, hey, you should see the paper this Sunday. So I got the paper this Sunday. And um, I'm going to hold this up to the camera, but it's a, uh, they, this is a thing we come out with about once a year in Erie. And it's kind of a, a special on the local economy. And uh, what they talk about in here is uh, several different parts of the economy, right? They'll talk about banking and the service industries. And, uh, here in Erie, Pennsylvania, if you're not from here, we've got a couple major hospitals here in town and a couple major universities, so they all buy some space in this. So it's like an economic report. Well, I'm going to hold this up to the camera see if we can read that there. Focus, oh, let's see, focusing on manufacturing, and the subheadline there says, the return of manufacturing jobs to the U.S., now, if you uh, are in manufacturing, when that gets your attention, and I'm not going to make fun of this at all. This is, I was just surprised at, 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 at the headline, um, but it's a, um, it's a paid-for ad by ZipRecruiter. So uh, basically, uh, it's, it, it just kind of covers what we all kind of already know. Robots winning the race for American jobs. Technology is killing jobs, and only technology can save them. So those are just a few of the headlines hitting computer screens everywhere and a common fear among Americans. And a recent report by McKinsey found that 49% of workers' activities can be turned over to a machine or a robot. And that's a big industry where Americans fear this is happening at manu manufacturing. And ZipRecruiter goes on to say that their goal is to help people find meaningful work and help employers build great companies. So it really doesn't really match the headline, the return of manufacturing jobs to the U.S., so will they ever come back? That's a question. What do you think? The number here is 451-1400. Um, you know, I think that uh, ship has sailed. I think uh, some small boats might come back. Um, but until uh, there's a level playing field, I'm all for free trade. But I don't think the, the, the uh, playing field is just very uh, level. And that's the part that is the toughest for me to swallow, that uh, we're trading with people that aren't playing by the same rules. And that's, uh, that's you know, again, I'm... Uh, pretty staunch guy on, on American manufacturing. So uh, what we're going to do for a second here is uh, bring in Mr. Rob Kerner here. And uh, for those of you who don't know about uh, uh, my four boys, uh, Robert is my uh, second oldest. And um, Rob just completed, uh, he worked his way, literally one of those guys worked his way through college and just graduated uh, this past spring and uh, moved up the chain at his past job and uh, just took a, a job uh, with the fifth largest bank in America. Is it number five? Well, it depends on how you rank it. Some, okay. Yeah, some rank it on deposits, some rank it on, uh, you know, actual size of the branch and stuff. Okay, well, it's interesting, though, if you're listening to this program right now, and I've made this very clear in uh, many interviews I've done and videos I've done, I always say, you know, um, my grandfather was a tool and die maker. Uh, my father was a tool and die maker. My uncles were tool and die makers. My brother was a tool and die maker. Big shock, I became a tool and die maker, but none of my kids are in manufacturing. And uh, there, there's no, uh, uh, that doesn't bother me at all. I mean, uh, uh, I'm very proud of the fact that uh, Rob's finished up college and is using his degree in finance, uh, to actually really using it to go into a banking opportunity. But, you know, um, I don't know if we've really ever had a conversation like, like with, about this, Robert, but... Uh, you watched your dad as a child uh, since you've since you've known me. This is all I've done, you know. And uh, you rem no doubt remember the shops and you remember the guys. But uh, what was it like uh, growing up, the dad and in, in, in manufacturing and uh, being around the shop? Uh, what are, what are your memories of that? I mean, I had a lot of fond memories. Uh, you <laughs> brought all of us in for a time to you know maybe work part time and. Uh, so <clears throat> I was introduced to, you know, the manufacturing environment pretty young. I think when I was like 10 or 12, I came in and cleaned up on the weekends. So uh, I got to see guys getting their hands dirty, um, guys that were, you know, on their feet all day. Um, and, and I could see, you know, 
the finished product. I could see guys starting from the beginning and ending, and I and, and troubleshooting on the on the job. Um, I earned, I mean, I, I ended up getting a lot of respect for what these guys do on a day to day basis, and for what you and uh, you had created back then. I mean, with the shop, it was a really cool experience. You know, um, uh, it's interesting. You really don't. Uh, how do I want to say this? You know, uh, you and Matt both worked at the shop. Uh, that would be Robert's older brother. And, and uh, we just, I would start them off uh, just sweeping floors, just to you know, make a couple dollars and get them used to being around the shop. And let's be honest, to get them out of your mom's hair for a little bit. And they'd come over and hang out at the shop during the summers. But, um, you know, you don't, you never really got the bug, though, to get into it. Manufacturing was not, that wasn't uh, something you had. Well, I mean, I guess it wasn't until high school when I really started to consider what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, you know. Um, up until that point, it was a family-owned business. You know, the thought did cross my mind, would I take this over someday? Would this be, you know, a generational thing? But, uh, you know, coming from, you know, where we came from, a lot of my generation um, had a lot of pressure on them to go to college and, and get into something more white-collar. And, uh, you know, all of my friends were doing it. And, you know, I look back at it now, and I have a whole total different opinion about that whole situation as far as, um, you know, just educating the youth on what's next and, and what, you know, what kind of jobs might fit you better because I just went to college, to be honest, because that was what the majority of my friends were doing and I wanted to be a part of, and uh, it seemed like that was the quickest destination to success. And um, I don't know if it was positioned that way or what, um, but, you know, I'm a firm believer now uh, of maybe taking some time after high school to really get some on-the-job experience before making a decision like that, and, and maybe working in a shop, working with your hands, um, maybe even something into engineering, building. Uh, I mean, this stuff, as you've said on your program many times, uh, really builds character, and, and, uh, and there's a lot of value in, you know, working with your hands and creating something that I just don't think uh, gets enough credit. Well, I, 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 of course, I, you're preaching to the choir. I appreciate that. But uh, the interesting part is, um, you know, you started uh, college like a, a, a typical um, young man at, uh, what, 18? Mm -hmm. And yes. But you would be the first to admit that uh, you weren't really ready to go to college back then, right? I mean, you actually did much better when you went back uh, a little older. Yes, that's absolutely true. Uh -huh. And uh, I think, uh, again, Robert worked his way through college, so... Uh, Nobody appreciates the uh, money that's being spent more than the person that's spending the money. And uh, we, uh, we graduated with a great GPA and uh, uh, working our way in, into a great career now. But uh, I would say watching you go through it and then watching other people that just jump into the college experience right out of high school, especially if they move out of town, um, it's not for everybody. It, it's not. And what you're paying for that education to kind of maybe not do very well the first semester because then, then your GPA is tanked and you're behind the eight ball for the rest of your four years trying to get that in, in place. So uh, Robert's a, obviously a, a nice success story and uh, very proud of where he's been able to take his career. Uh, but it's been, he's worked hard for it. I can guarantee you that. And uh, that's the, I think maybe I'd like to take a little credit for that work ethic you've got sometimes, everybody. Absolutely. Just a little bit. Thank you so much, Dad. Anything <laughs> anything going on uh, on YouTube there, Mr. Kerner? Um, yes, Erling Wiseth uh, commented, and I'm sorry if I butchered that last name, but uh, I just wanted to express my gratitude to all the video contributors and the whole machine and community for teaching the rest of us the secrets and how-tos in the trade. And then we have another comment uh, about your opening monologue. Just a little sidebar. Beard 681 sta uh, says the internet is full of guns. Trump, Korea, etc. Talk about something else. <laughs> that's true. And then listen, I appreciate that, and that's why I went into that gently. It was not as much about the guns. I hope that's that's what people tag onto. It was kind of about more of a general statement on the uh, where we are, we kind of are as a society, and I and I get that, and I and I appreciate that comment, and that's why I, um, I kind of pre-called it before I went into it that. Don't want to get into a gun debate. I get that. And that's not what this program is about. But again, as I said, you know, I have a perspective on things in, and as do the people listening to the program and watching on YouTube. And I'm just interested in where, or where people are at. And like I said, this um, basic uh, 
lack of uh, uh, human decency sometimes, whether it results in shootings or just people being jerks to people, you know, online and bullying. And it's just a, a desensitization, the desensitization of the society. So I'm not real thrilled with that's That was all the main gist for the conversation. So please don't take that as a gun rant. But if that's the worst one I get tonight, I can, I can live with that. That's not too bad. No, it's not too bad. That's not too bad. So, uh, again, the number here is uh, 814-451-1400, and uh, this is Working Hands Radio. I'm your host, Phil Kerner, and um, I think we'll take a two-minute break here for a few commercials, and we'll see you back here in uh, just a minute. Captain Brad White here, founder of New England Burials at Sea. Because of our well-respected brand reputation, we are so proud that we've grown from coast to coast as people from all over ask for us by name to use our services. You, too, will be impressed at our attention to detail. Many families say, I didn't know you could do this, where, or how to honor our parents' final sea burial wishes. From ash scatterings to full-body burials, we work with all cultures and creeds and can accommodate families up to six or larger groups to 400. Our sea burial tributes are respectful, memorable, and affordable, with prices starting at just under $495. Check out our informative website, NewEnglandBurialsAtSea.com, and be sure to ask for our free informational DVD. We'd be honored to be of service to you and your family, for now or in the future. So contact us today. Visit NewEnglandBurialsAtSea.com or call 877-897-7700. Again, 877-897-7700. NewEnglandBurialsAtSea.com. Hi folks, this is Phil Kerner for Working Hands Radio. Let's face it, the last 10 years or so has been one tough ride for American manufacturing. Well, this sponsor of Working Hands Radio has managed to not only get through the last 10 years, but just celebrated their 50th year in business in 2017. Folks, I've been doing this for a long time, and I have to tell you, I've never seen a shop that jumps through more hoops to keep their customers satisfied than industrial sales and manufacturing right here in Erie, Pennsylvania. With over $30 million in equipment on the shop floor, no job is too simple, no job is too complex for ISM. CNC milling and turning, robotic welding, laser cutting, plasma burning, assembly, and powder coating are all done under one roof, which gives ISM a big edge over many companies that might have to subcontract many of those operations out and lose control of the process. Industrial sales and manufacturing deals with some of the most demanding customers in the world and strives for continuous improvement on a daily basis. Built in Erie, found around the world. Give them a shot. ismerie.com. Welcome back. My name is Phil Kerner, and again, you're listening to Working Hands Radio. We're broadcasting right here in Erie, Pennsylvania, and streaming this via uh, uh, YouTube around the globe tonight. And, uh, of course, what we love to talk about here is working with your hands. And um, we love to hear from you. Again, the number here, 451-1400. The number, uh, if you're from out of town, just put 814 in front of that, 814-451-1400. So it's interesting that uh, looking at the social media side of things tonight, uh, I've got some guys in um, Michigan and uh, I wonder how they're doing up there. Um, you know, if, I'd love to hear from one of the guys in Michigan because um, when I look at manufacturing along what we call the traditional rust belt, uh, um, and I call the rust belt basically Buffalo, maybe even Rochester, Buffalo, Erie, Cleveland, Toledo, and Detroit. And, uh, of course, that was the Great Lakes, and that was the... Um, uh, the, the ability to bring uh, raw manufacturing in th- from the great l- through the Great Lakes, uh, uh, the materials needed, iron ore and steel and those things that the manufacturers needed at that time. And then you look at a city like Detroit now, and uh, you know, I, I I I know they're trying to rebuild Detroit, but it, it's a it's a it's a tough tough deal. And uh, here in Erie, Pennsylvania, um, you know, there's a few shops that are still hanging in there. Uh, you know, GE, our GE plant that's been here for 100 years just announced uh, a few months ago that they'll no longer uh, be building locomotives here for the first time in 100 years. And it's a, you know, kind of a blow to the community uh, because when you have a company the size of a General Electric in town at one point, at one point employed 15,000 people, and then, you know, recent, more recently it was down to five, then 3,500. But uh, the spin off jobs, 
for that, right? You've got the uh, the uh, the stuff that GE can't get done that other shops around town, dozens of other shops in town, will do for them. So what is the answer to that? You know, that's one of the reasons we're here is to get that conversation started a little bit. How do you bring that back? Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. You know, I come from the injection molding business, and not, I didn't run injection molds. I built them. And uh, when the, um, and again, this isn't a whining thing about China, and no, we're not going to get into that, but that's what happened. Um, NAFTA, I don't really think affected me. It was easy to blame NAFTA at that time. But uh, what happened was uh, after China was led into the World Trade Organization, and uh, boy, that just that was that was within two years. I think they were let in in 2001, and by 2003, my clients were all there. They were all in China, and um, so here's here's how can your government help you in a situation like this? Well, again, and, I'm, and if you missed, the, I may have heard this on the, one of the first programs I did. What happens is uh, a guy that you know you, you'd build an injection mold for, or a company that you used to charge, let's say, $30,000. Injection molds aren't cheap, folks, okay? They're custom designed. They're a lot of work. And, uh, but, you, you know, $30,000, and all of a sudden they expected um, uh, immediately for you to do that same exact job for three or four or $5,000. And I had that much into the materials, right? Well, here's the, the dirty little secret about that, and, and, and is that, if I'm the, uh, the guy who ordered that mold from China and it comes back and it's not right, so I paid five grand for a mold I should have paid thirty for, and then I pay uh, some other tool shop another ten to fix it, I get to write that ten thousand dollars off as a repair. Beautiful, right? So the, de the 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 deck was definitely stacked at least against the tool and die making industry, the mold making industry, right? So uh, I believe we have a caller. Let's uh, go to the lines. Caller, you're on the air. This is Working Hands Radio. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, you're on the air? Well, he was on the air. We scared him away. Must be the voice. So anyways, um, back to that uh, original um, thought about how we could bring back manufacturing to this country. Is it's, it, 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 the laws and the tax codes and the ways around things have made it so easy to go overseas uh, for big manufacturers. Um, and, and the only part about that, forget about me closing my shop, that's bad enough. But you know, it's the, well, the American public really got duped on this one, was, you know, I built a lot of toys. I built a lot of toys for, you remember Robert, Little Tykes. Little Tykes toys. And, and uh, they were a tremendous customer. A lot of fun to work with. And uh, so let's just say, you know, I built this little toy car mold. And you know, these toy cars come out. And I'd walk through Walmart or Toys R Us and I'd see my car. Wow, it's fun to see the stuff you built on the shelves. And it was 15 bucks, right? Well, then all my work went to China for 10 cents on the dollar, literally. And then I go back into, into Walmart or, or Toys R Us a year later. That car is still 15 bucks. We lost all the work. They just, the, who, who got the money? The corporation got the money. And again, I'm all about profits. But, you know, again, um, manufacturing. The last thing I'd like to say, too, or one more thing, and there's never a last thing with me. It, it, it never ends. But the one thing I always like to say about manufacturing, too, is that, you know, to, to me it's still a little bit of a matter of national defense. The ability to uh, build your own airplanes and tanks and uh, uh, missile silos, the things you need to defend your co country, uh, you got to build that stuff yourself, right? I mean, if, if, if communist China has all our manufacturing, and I'm not into, you know, bashing the Chinese or we're going to go nuclear war with them, but that can't be good, can it? Can it? How can that be good for them to be building all, all our electronics for our F-15s or F-22s? How can that possibly be in our best interest? And, you know, unfortunately, again, back to politics in Washington, D.C., and the rules that are made, the lobbyists that come in, and the money that's paid. Uh, who knows how these rules get changed and the loopholes that are there for the biggest companies in the world to farm that stuff out. And I don't even know what the rule is. If you're Lockheed Martin or Boeing or any of these companies, can that stuff even be farmed out? I, I, I should know that answer, but I'm sure it's complicated. I'm sure maybe some of it can be farmed out. But wouldn't it be just terrible to, to think your, your, uh, your armed forces are being supplied by a potential conflict or enemy, you know? I bet there's no way to find out. <laughs> you know, the, you know, one of the things I did want to talk to you about, Robert, too, since you've got a different perspective because, you know, you being a little younger than me, 
uh, when you know you look at uh, uh, the life in general as far as uh, your career and uh, and as you go into more into your field and the financing, you'll probably run into some local businesses. You know, um, it'll be interesting for you to see you know what kind of um, uh, customers come into the bank as far as wanting finances and what kind of businesses. Because I'm very pro business and I'm always curious to uh, uh, know what the trend is. But uh, in your age group, I guess, uh, uh, recently graduated from college, of course, a little later in life. But uh, what uh, what do most of your what do you see a lot of your friends that are educated? What are they doing? Well, if I look back on like the people I went to high school with, I mean, there definitely is a mix. Uh, a lot of these, a lot of my friends. I mean, some of them are working with their hands, maybe in contracting, or uh, like a trade like plumbing or electrician. Uh, but I'd say the big trend right now, a lot of the guys that I went to school with um, are in information in the technology, you know, software engineering. Uh, I think that's where a lot of the mo money is right now. Um, in Erie, I don't know if that's so much the case as far as technology goes, but if I were to do it all over again, that's probably what I would go into. Technology. I mean, yeah, because mm -hmm. it just seems to be ever expanding. I mean, the jobs obviously pay really well. Um, and my friends that went into those fields got placed pretty easily. Okay, so I, um, I guess the question would be, you know, uh, uh, when you were, you know, as you were finishing up uh, um, your college career and uh, you were starting to look about around for new jobs, I, and we didn't talk a lot about that at the time, but uh, how many of those jobs that you were really interested in were in Erie, Pennsylvania, and how many? Because I know, I do believe you mentioned a lot of times they, you would have to move. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, uh, it's still on the table mm -hmm. um, if an opportunity presented itself down the line. Um, but uh, it's really hard to find information on that, I mean, as far as what jobs are looking. I mean, obviously, you have the big career sites, uh, the Monsters, and the, mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many out there now. They're kind of a dime a dozen. They don't, they don't give you very good options. They're, they're kind of just uh, full of, you know, temp opportunities and and so i just feel like i didn't get enough information uh as far as what was available um because like sitting here living here my whole life i don't know what to tell you as far as you know what opportunities are available in technology and software and obviously i mean back to that point if i could do it all over again you have to be a really smart person to do that stuff too i mean these, these you gotta have the math gene people. i always call yeah. it the math gene these guys are are very intelligent i mean it's the ones i know mm -hmm. so um I guess the question is then uh, that I always rhetorically ask on this program, and it's kind of weird for me to even ask this, this question, but if you had to do it all over again, if you're listening now, uh, would you get back into manufacturing? I guess the bigger question is you had a niece or a nephew or even a son or a daughter come to you and say they want to work as a toolmaker or go into manufacturing. Would you, what would you say? Would you say yes? Would you say no? I know what I'd say now compared to what I used to say. Uh, it was interesting, you know, again, owning my shops back in the 90s into the early 2000s. I used to get a call a week from a kid looking for an apprenticeship, okay? And then uh, by 2001, it was uh, maybe a call every three months, and by 2002, it was a call a year. And I, that told me the writing was kind of on the wall here, right? Because um, the scary part is, and if you talk to salespeople and guys that go, uh, move around a little bit and call on different shops unfortunately now when you go into a, 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 a any of the tool die shops are left the average employees look like me you know and that was my fear that if kids didn't get into the trade there wouldn't be a trade uh, left to pass on and i think we might be very close to that um i don't know that for sure but uh about a year or two ago there was an auction here in town and uh I, I I I don't need to mention the name of the, the shop, but uh, this yeah, this guy he was older, and uh, that was the most beautiful shop I'd ever seen in my life. And I've seen a lot of shops. The, I've never seen a shop that was cleaner than this guy's tool and die shop. And it was almost scary how clean it was. I mean, you you would have no problem setting a burger down on any machine in that shop, shaking somebody's hand and picking the burger right back up and eating it. It was that spotless. And I remember chatting with him a little bit uh, before the auction. I said, "What happened?" And he said uh, he had uh, one customer left, and they all went to the Philippines. And that uh, and, and he did incredibly precise work for the medical industry, syringes and things like that. And that even left. 
So it's, it's you know, and this guy still wanted to work. I think he was like 64 or 66. He was going to go get a job. He likes doing it, you know. But it, it that that was it for him. So here you have a pristine shop, a guy that knows what he's doing, a master craftsman, and, uh, you know, he couldn't make it. And, it, you know, been in business most of his life. So um, that, to me, is the, 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 the question of the hour. Again, back to... Uh, um, talking about manufacturing, where do we go next? I like what you said, Robert, about the technology part. And again, we're having the kids on from McDowell, that at least the, the robotics and that technology is um, getting them used to working with their hands and assembling and actually designing and assembling something. That gave me a lot of hope. Um, I don't know what to say about um, some of our city, or not even city, let's just go, just call them technical schools. Let's talk about our technical schools a little bit. Um, you know, I had a, um, because I am the apprentice supervisor where I work, I get some access once in a while to the local tech schools for meetings and things like that. And I remember talking to uh, one of the uh, teachers, um, actually one of the administrators a year or so ago, and uh, how many kids are in their, their machine shop class. And I think they start off with about 14, she said, and about halfway through, uh, they, they lose a few. And they said they usually graduate eight to ten kids, all right. And I and I said, well, how many of those eight to ten kids get a job doing that then? Two. And I I was actually stunned at that. Two kids out of that. And I asked, what was the problem? And the answer I got, I'm not saying it's it's the right answer, but what she told me is they can't get to work. They don't have cards. Now the guys I work with, when I told that story, said, what don't they have legs? But that's that generation, right? So everybody, you know, it's just different. And, you know, I, and there's stories all over, I'm sure, in the town. That, and if, if you're listening from Detroit or Flint, you know, there's stories. A lot of guys used to just walk to work. The factory, you know, there was a great story in the Erie paper here a couple of weeks ago about GE when they came to Erie. The first thing they did was build Lawrence Park. They built the town first so the guys could just walk to work. Smart. I don't know if they do that anymore or not. So, um, again, the phone line's here. 814-451, uh, this is Working Hands Radio. We're talking about uh, anybody who works with their hands, the, the trades, uh, people who um, know the satisfaction of, uh, at the end of the day, looking at um, a mold or a die or a cabinet or something you, you just built, and you, just, and you say, you know, that is pretty cool, and you're very proud of that work. And there is a satisfac satisfaction that comes with uh, building things and working with your hands. So that's what we're here to do. We're here to promote the trades. We're here to talk about the trades. And uh, we'll be back if you've, uh, with a few more minutes for open phone lines. Again, the number here, 814-451-1400. Uh, we'll be back after this quick commercial message. Captain Brad White here, founder of New England Burials at Sea. Because of our well-respected brand reputation, we are so proud that we've grown from coast to coast as people from all over ask for us by name to use our services. You, too, will be impressed at our attention to detail. Many families say, I didn't know you could do this, where, or how to honor our parents' final sea burial wishes. From ash gatherings to full body burials, we work with all cultures and creeds and can accommodate families up to six or larger groups to 400. Our sea burial tributes are respectful, memorable, and affordable with prices starting at just under $495. Check out our informative website, newenglandburialsatsea.com, and be sure to ask for our free informational DVD. We'd be honored to be of service to you and your family, for now or in the future. So contact us today. Visit NewEnglandBurialsAtSea.com or call 877-897-7700. Again, 877-897-7700. NewEnglandBurialsAtSea.com. Hi, folks. This is Phil Kerner for Working Hands Radio. Let's face it. The last 10 years or so has been one tough ride for American manufacturing. Well, this sponsor of Working Hands Radio has managed to not only get through the last 10 years, but just celebrated their 50th year in business in 2017. Folks, I've been doing this for a long time, and I have to tell you, I've never seen a shop that jumps through more hoops to keep their customers satisfied than industrial sales and manufacturing right here in Erie, Pennsylvania. With over $30 million in equipment on the shop floor, no job is too simple, no job is too complex for ISM. CNC milling and turning, robotic welding, laser cutting, plasma burning, assembly, and powder coating are all done under one roof 
which gives ISM a big edge over many companies that might have to subcontract many of those operations out and lose control of the process. Industrial sales and manufacturing deals with some of the most demanding customers in the world and strives for continuous improvement on a daily basis. Built in Erie, found around the world. Give them a shot. ismerie.com. And welcome back uh, for the last uh, segment here of Working Hands Radio. I'm Phil Kerner, and broadcasting live from uh, downtown Erie, Pennsylvania tonight. We used to call this the jewel of the Rust Belt. Um, quickly, I did want to take just a moment. Uh, as I said at the beginning of this program, um, we wouldn't be here without the help of a, of a few friends that saw the, um, the promise of uh, what we're doing here and wanted to help out. So, again, uh, I did do this earlier, but I just wanted to welcome these great guys, uh, Utterly Smooth. Uh, it's a, a lotion company based out, I believe, in Sal Salem, Ohio. Uh, Family-owned business, awful cool. And I did want to make sure I also mentioned uh, a brand-new sponsor tonight, uh, Simple Solutions for Living. Pretty cool business. Uh, Marion Taylor, they'll come in uh, to your home, help you downsize, you know, mom or dad, when it's time to move into the smaller house or senior citizen uh, home. Uh, that's their crew. They do a great job. Very well known here in Erie, Pennsylvania. So welcome aboard. Simple Solutions, and I should just take a minute and uh, thank Tom Kennedy at Professional Developments and Associates. He was on last week. Great guy. And my good friend up at Duskus Martin Funeral Home, Jack Martin. Uh, Jack puts the fun in funerals, folks. Jack's a good guy. Good man. So here we are back uh, to finish up tonight uh, quickly. Uh, Robert, uh, my son Rob Kerner, is taking care of helping me with the social media tonight. So anything going on on YouTube tonight there, Mr. Kerner? Yeah, we have a few comments here. Um, Beard681 says, uh, most countries have a VAT. He uh, spells it capital V-A-T, which greatly incentivizes local production. It also prevents offshore scams to avoid taxes. Nobody on the Internet or elsewhere even talks about it. You, do you know what he's talking about? I do not. So, uh, you know what? What's, it, what's this guy's acronym or what's he going by his tag name is uh beard 681 hey beard 681 what's a vat give us a call We've got a few minutes left here 814-451-1400 uh you, you, nobody will see your face you see us but we don't see you so it's okay pick up the phone okay but i'd be curious about that concept what else you got uh toolman 22364 says he's a fourth generation tool maker wouldn't change a thing I'd be curious to know where, uh, uh, what city he's working in. That would be awesome to know. So if he hears the comment, uh, where are you working at? I'm always, always curious to see where people are managing to keep the fourth generation going. That's great news. Um, yeah, Beard681 also said he's an engineer living on the East Coast, and then he tells prospective students to study accounting. The economy has become totally financialized, and accounting is the language of finance. And there you are in the banking industry. It looks like you made a good career decision there, Mr. Kerner. So Thank you for the confirmation, <laughs> Beard681. Uh, another comment from Inexpla. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing yeah, this I, right. Some of these names are crazy. I get it. Uh, he right. says, bring in some tech school instructors for a show. Would like to hear what they have to say. You know what? That's a great idea, and uh, I can arrange it. Actually, um, I believe this Friday, <laughs> I'm look at my schedule here. I believe this Friday I'm actually doing a, a speaking engagement at the tech school and to talk about the wonderful trade of manufacturing and why they should be, these young men and women should uh, consider a career in manufacturing. So hopefully I'll run into the teachers. Now, my apprentice uh, that I supervise at work, he takes night classes, and it's a little different animal. Uh, but I won't say where he goes. But um, it's a little shocking what does happen. You know, these two guys come in at night to teach these kids, and you wouldn't believe what happens. You know, um, ugh. guys that during the day, the teachers in the day leave and forget to leave the keys for the, for the tools. So these kids come in at night, and it's time to start their project, and they, they don't even have any tools to do the project. And this happens. It's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. And... Um, the problem I have with that whole thing is, um, you know, coming from manufacturing, there should be an order to everything, and it should make sense. And if you're going to have somebody teaching at night, like a foreman would be at the shop at night, you don't hand the keys. You don't say, hey, Robert, you're going to be my foreman at Kerner Tool and Die tonight, okay? But by the way, I locked the tool crib up. 
right? And you don't get any keys to it. And then, then I come in the next day and chew you out because no work got done, or I didn't get your, you know, or, or this kid doesn't get his assignment done on time, because they could. It's there needs to be, a, you know, I'm just in that way. I, I really feel like it should always be some order to uh, uh, the, the a method to the madness, and sometimes uh, I've, I've expanded on not enough. But I believe. Uh, I can get somebody in here from the local. We have two tech schools here in town, folks. We have a Erie County Technical School. That's where I went, uh, and that that supplies all the county schools. And then we have an Erie Technical School that is in, in the city of Erie. And unfortunately, they experienced a pretty good fire last spring that started in all places in their horticulture lab, I believe. It was bizarre, but it torched a lot of the school, and it took them six months to get it going. So. Uh, oh, let's see, let's see, thank you. The VAT, a value added tax. Well, we'll have to look into value added taxes. Hey, you're the financial guy. Do you know what that is? I feel like I should know. <laughs> so that's a start. <laughs> that's a start. That's a start. I got some homework. You do. All right. So, um, again, this was week six, uh, Working Hands Radio. And, and it's always a pleasure, like I said at the beginning of the program. Um, this is one of the most rewarding things I've done in the trade. Uh, uh, Broadcasting about manufacturing from my hometown, from a very historic uh, building here in Erie, Pennsylvania. It doesn't get any cooler than that, right? So uh, I want to, first of all, thank uh, Mr. Kerner, my son Robert, for handling the social media tonight. Excellent job, Robert. Thank you. And then I also um, want to talk just uh, a little bit about, uh, um, especially if you guys are online, the Tool and Die Guy. The Tool and Die Guy dot com uh, is where I teach, and the, that's a. Um, uh, been a website I put together for seven years ago now, and there's about 350 training videos, 330 training videos on there. So take a look at that. That's that's my night job for the most part, unless I'm here at the radio station. But again, why we're here? We're here to promote working with your hands. We're here to promote the trades, talk about the trades, where we're going next. Um, the other thing is, I always want to make sure people are aware of. You know, again, uh, we only exist because of the help of uh, people who see the value in talking about manufacturing who see the value in talking about the trade. So uh, if you go to workinghandsradio.com, uh, that's where you'll see a little bit more about our sponsors. That's where you can actually support the program with a small donation if you're so inclined because um, we're here um, for one purpose. And again, that's to promote working with your hands. So the music you heard tonight, uh, and you're gonna, we're going to finish off the program with, is a local guy. And I hope I don't butcher this. Ron U Euros. Ron Euros and the uh, vehicle. And they're a tremendous local band. So I got permission from Ron to play a little of his music tonight to finish off the program. And uh, it was an interesting story trying to get the CD from him yesterday. But we tracked him down because I had a CD and it got stuck in my CD player in my car. And man, that is not coming out. It is just not coming out. I've tried everything. It's not coming out. So I always end with this um, quickly. And... Uh, I think this is a great way to um, remember a show, a program about uh, working with your hands. A man who works with his hands is a laborer. A man who works with his hands and his brain is a craftsman. But a man who works with his hands, his brain, and his heart is an artist. So I'm Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die Guy for Working Hands Radio. Uh, we'll see you next Tuesday night. 7 p.m. for program number 7 right here from downtown Erie at the Boston Store. Until then, keep the peace and uh, enjoy the program. Thank you. Financial Studios in the historic Boston store. Your news talk leader. WJT Erie. A guilty plea.